Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about how to use the enumerable method in your Ruby classes that are collections of objects. This is gonna give you the ability to query and filter and sort and fetch and iterate and all kinds of different things. You can see all the methods that it adds here. And you'll recognize a lot of these methods like sort and map and each um, and so on. All of these are coming from enumerable and they allow your objects to work a lot like an array. So let's take a look at a real world example and then build our own. If you use active record, you will get an active record relation object back whenever you say um, you wanna get a list of results back. And so in this case, we might get some users back. It is smart enough to add other SQL features like order, um, so we can order by columns in SQL, but we can also use map here and we can say, give me all the names of these users um, from enumerable. And that is going to go through each one of these in the relation. It's gonna then yield each one of these to this block, calling the name method and keeping um, those in a new array and returning that. So that is um, pretty cool. So what is a real example we might want to use this in? Well, any API request we might want to do. We might have a class which will be a collection of those items. So we'll say initialize items at items equals items. And let's say your API gives you back users or servers or any other type of item. We'll call ours item to keep it generic. Um, but this would be various different classes that represent the objects the, um, the API is returning. So this would be initialize, and it would take the attributes that you wanna save here. We're just gonna keep it simple and use name for each of those. And so we'll create a new collection of a bunch of items. So we'll say item.new, this one will be X, Y, Z. We'll say item.new, um, maybe beta, item.new, alpha. And one of the methods that we can try first is first, <laughs> and um, we will print out the name of that first object. So this is what we want to be able to do. But if we run this right now with Ruby collection.rb, it's going to blow up and say, first isn't a method on the collection instance. And that is true, we only have the initialize method here. If we include enumerable, we are going to get a different error. And this error is gonna say that the enumerable first method tried to call each, which isn't implemented here. And each is a dependency of the enumerable um, module. So we need to define each so that we can implement and use enumerable. Now this method is a little different than you might be used to. It's, it's gonna have a little magic line here where we're gonna say return enum for each as a symbol unless a block is given. And then we are going to then say at items each and block. And so we'll capture the block as an argument and then we will, um, if a block was given, we will yield and forward that over to the items and have its each on the array call that block. But if not, it's going to return an enumerator for this method. So if you're not f uh, terribly familiar with enumerators, um, let's look at this. If we say an array of one, two, three, and we call dot each, and we don't give it a block, it gives us an enumerator back. So let's say enum equals that. Enum can then ask for every single one of these items one by one. We can say next, we say next, we say next, and it's going to know its position in that array and we can ask for every single one of those as needed and basically pull them out one by one whenever we are ready. We don't have to give it a block and parse and, and run all of them right away. We can do this step by step. And that's what an enumerator is going to allow us to do. And that's why this is also called enumerable because it gives us all these functions that are going to either run on that uh, enumerator or for items dot each and map them to a block. So that's what first is basically doing. It's calling enum.next to get just the first one, and we don't care about the rest of them, so it can just stop there. 
when we do something else, like we want to map all of these by name, then we can print them out. And here you will see um, undefined method uh, name for the instance of an item. So we can add adder reader of name so we can access that. But now you'll see that it is mapping every single one of these items and then calling the name method because it's going through this block and it's trying to ask for the name of every one of those and return those. And if we do a regular P and inspect the output, we'll see it's actually an array and puts has just converted it into friendlier output to print each one of the items in the array out um, on their own line. And so this is cool. Um, we can also do this where we can say, let's sort them first. If we wanna use sort, what we need to do is actually implement something on every one of the items inside of the collection. And that is the spaceship operator. And it's going to give some comparable object to us. And we need to figure out how we want to compare ourselves to that other object. So if we grab the string of name for ourselves, we can use the spaceship operator from the string class to compare against the items, the other items name. And then the names of the two will be compared and sorted for us automatically. Um, and so this is going to then do the sorting and give us those back with names sorted alpha, beta, X, Y, Z. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can also do a find, we could say find where it name equals beta, for example, and this should give us that single item back with the name of beta. So all of these different methods from enumerable are available to us now um, where we can call any of these group by, uh, chunk, slice, min, max, all that stuff. Tons of features by simply including a module and defining one method here and we are off to the races. Now this is the correct way to implement this where each needs to have this version for the numerator. Um, object that is returned, or it can go loop through those items and apply that block. Um, and so this is something that we've done in like the vulture gem, where we have a collection of innumerable responses. This has, you know, some other information about how to get the next page, how many total results there are, but we can now iterate through each one of these and say, give me the first one, and the next one and so on. And we don't have to go through this data attribute anymore. We can actually operate directly on the collection, which will then do the operations on the data attribute for us. So that kind of makes the collection um, object, not just a wrapper around an array where you have to sometimes dig into the array or not. This makes the collection basically one and the same with that array, which is really, really neat. Um, so yeah, enumerable is awesome. I really, really like it. It is a very handy feature to have in Ruby. I don't see a ton of people talking about it. Some of the examples don't have the complete implementation like this. They only implement the each and passing the block, but this is the correct way to do it. And then also a lot of them don't talk about the sorting method here with the spaceship operator. So that's important too. And if we look that up, in the Ruby docs as well. Um, you can see that this is implemented on pretty much all of the different classes that might need to be compared against. Um, an example here that will be the easiest to show is like integer. Basically this method needs to return a negative one if it is if the current object is smaller than the one we're comparing against, a zero if they're equal, or a one if the current item is larger than the other one. So when you were implementing this, that other object is what you are comparing against. So we wanna say, if our name is, um, is less than the other one, we wanna return negative one. And we're really just delegating all this logic right to the string operator, or the string comparison there. Um, so if we look for that on string, this is actually the implementing implementation we're delegating to, and we don't have to do any of the actual logic ourselves. 
All of that is going to happen here in the Ruby code in the C source. So we don't have to really do much with that. And really this is um, for complex objects, like maybe you want users to be compared against their created at dates, or maybe their IDs are um, incremental integers. And so you wanna use that instead. It's really up to you because this is going to depend on the objects and their data um, and how you want them to be sorted. So you can't just blindly have this uh, implemented for everything. You need to actually decide and be smart about how you want your sorting to operate. You can leave this out. It's not necessary, but it is important uh, and required if you're going to be doing any sort of sorting, um, which we were doing previously. But you don't need it for things like first or find because it can just go through every item um, using the each block here rather than having to do any comparisons, which it doesn't need to do unless it's doing some sort of comparison or sort. So there you go. Enumerable is a really valuable and useful tool to have in your collection type classes throughout your applications. Um, so if you ever need some functionality like this, remember all you have to do is include the module implement.each and then optionally the spaceship operators for your items in that collection. So that is it. I hope you found this useful. I definitely use this all over the place. Um, when I'm building things like API clients and stuff. So take a look at this. It is incredibly valuable. And uh, I will talk to you in the next episode. Peace.